Hello my dear friends, in this case I encountered a strange and unique finding which I'd like to present. So let's get started with the creation of the clear corneal incision and let's run through the initial stages of the procedure quite fast because the peculiar finding occurred towards the end of the procedure. So the capsulorexis is being performed. This is a grade 1 to 2 nucleosclerotic cataract and using a Utrata titanium forceps, I'm creating a quite well-centered 5.5 millimeter capsulorexis. Once the capsulorexis has been achieved with a need to re-insufflate the anterior chamber of the viscoelastic, I proceed with cortical cleavage hydrodissection. So now I'm performing the cortical cleavage hydrodissection. The fluid wave you can see has passed well and this nucleus will rotate. There's also a slight rise in the central part of the nucleus. So the procedure of phacoemulsification is going to be a direct phaco chop with a power setting of 30% and using the micro pulse setting. However, the nucleus tends to be much softer than I anticipated and there was a little cheese wiring which I encountered while attempting the phaco chop. So instead of giving too much of power, I gave very little power and primarily holding the nucleus using high vacuum which is around 300 millimeters of mercury. I attempt to chop with holding on to the piece with just vacuum. Because the cataract is a little soft, there was a lot of cheese wiring and slowly there was a tendency for a crater to form. And I have created a few cracks and I've made few areas of good separation of the nucleus. So I hold on to the nucleus fragment with a high vacuum. I pull it towards the center and using the sharp chopper, I tumble the piece on away from the capsular bag and away from the clutches of the anterior capsule and free it and then I emulsify it in the center. I am attempting to do the same with this piece but this piece is tending to spring and fall back. So I switch and change over the second instrument from a sharp tip chopper of 1.5 millimeters to a Sinsky hook because the maneuverability will be much better with the Sinsky hook. Now at this point I notice that there is a small epinucleus fragment and that's lying at a much deeper plane than the rest of the nucleus. This sent up alarm signals in my mind and I'm wondering whether I have already created a posterior capsular rent because this piece looked very deep. However, the followability of the nucleus fragment was good and therefore I proceeded with the phaco emulsification. If there was vitreous in the anterior chamber, it will definitely impede the followability. At the end, I found there were three to four pieces of epinucleus that was at a much deeper plane than the posterior capsule. This is a very peculiar finding and it was remaining quite stationary. I do a viscofluid exchange before I pull the phaco probe out. I know that there has been a breach in the posterior capsule. Otherwise, these pieces would not have gone behind. Are they in the anterior vitreous or is it that they are in another plane altogether? I'm not able to tell for sure. So I turn on the retroglow. And that helps me to clearly delineate the fact that there is a small round punched out opening in the posterior capsule. And there are four pieces of epinucleus fragments which are floating just posterior to that but not sinking into the anterior vitreous. There's no evidence of vitreous being present in the anterior chamber. Therefore, I concluded that these pieces are probably in the Berger space. Since there was no cortex at all because of a very good cortical cleavage hydrodissection, I decided to put in the single piece hydrophobic acrylic lens inside the capsular bag. So this is a Technis 1 lens. My OTA assistant loaded the lens in, in a wrong fashion. So as it emerged from the eye, the haptic was actually facing up. 
which required that I turn the nozzle around almost 180 degrees to deliver the lens. In so doing, I delivered part of the lens outside the clear corneal incision. In spite of this, there was no increase in the size of this small punched out opening in the posterior capsule. You see the opening in the posterior capsule is round and it has not increased in size. So I deepened the anterior chamber with viscoelastic and then making use of a Y hook, I engaged the optic haptic junction and I tucked the trailing haptic inside the capsular bag very gently. So the lens is in the capsular bag now. You see the overlap of the anterior capsule over the optic of the lens. There is a small opening in the posterior capsule and there is Nuclear fragments which I am sure are in the Berger space and I am also certain that the anterior hyaloid phase is intact in this case. So as I wash out the viscoelastic, I get an idea that I can try to aspirate these fragments from within the Berger space. So I gently attempt to tilt the optic of the lens. The opening in the posterior capsule is still seen. It has not increased in size after implanting the IOL. I just go and please watch what happens at this point. I go behind, I give vacuum and three out of the four pieces get immediately sucked away while one gets displaced towards the periphery. The entire capsule is now clear. The pieces have disappeared. Although there is a small epinucleus fragment in the peripheral part of the Berger space, this will not create an anterior chamber reaction as you know that the pieces in the Berger space are quite isolated from the rest of the aqueous. So then I wash out the entire anterior chamber of viscoelastic. I come out and I find that the wound is nice and secure and the case is completed. This patient was followed up and I'd like to show you the photographs two weeks in the post-operative period. The visual acuity was 6.9 unaided improving to 6.6 with minus 0 0.75 cylinder. The opening in the poster capsule was clearly seen and this is the anterior capsular opening. With full dilation, there is absolutely no pieces that can be seen in the Berger space or in the visual field. The fundus was also normal. There was no evidence of vitreous in the anterior chamber under slit lamp examination and there was no evidence of cystoid macular edema. Thank you for your attention.